Malinaw po kami si Chairman na naglulukuhan tayo dito. Naglulukuhan tayo dito because the first letter promised us that he will be present after November 1. Kung hindi tayo naglulukuhan dito, eh ano, natatakot siya na pumunta dito? Eh, sabi si Chairman, that's why my first motion was to issue a SOCOS order for attorney Delga to answer both letters. And, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to reiterate once again that we should invite again the former president to be present in the next hearing. But just to be honest, Mr. Chair, I don't think the former president will ever attend the Quad Committee hearing. Okay. I'm sorry to say that. Okay. I, I really have a strong feeling that he will never attend the Quad Committee. Matapos nga ang naging pag-atake ni Dan Fernandez at Benny Abante sa kanilang preskon kay dating Pangulong Duterte, kamakailan lang, Pangulong Duterte, posibleng hindi na ito umatend pa sa mga hearing ng Quadcom. Ayon kay Congressman Adyong, hindi maganda ang ginawang pag-atake ng dalawang Congressman sa dating Pangulo at kakasuhan pa nga ang dalawang Congressman na ito ng perjury ng dating Pangulo dahil sa mga paratang nito sa mga nakaraang hearing. Halos mahay blood naman si Congressman Paduano sa hindi pag-attend ngayon ng dating Pangulo. Bagamat na nga ako ito na dadalo sa pagdinig pagkatapos ng November 1, ay hindi pa din ito nagpakita. Mr. Chair, may I proceed? Mr. Chair, uh, uh, on the matters of the letter of Delgra, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Please uh, proceed. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I believe, Mr. Chair, that the letter that was sent to this committee is about the reasons why the former president opted not to attend this committee hearing. Uh, as we all know, Mr. Chair, of previous days, previous days uh, ago, he attended the Senate inquiry on the same subject matter, Mr. Chair. I would just like to be enlightened uh, as to how do we go about with the standing inv inv invitation uh, to our resource persons. Uh, I understand, Mr. Chair, that the committee, this quad committee, has been so lenient to the former president and to some individuals. And I agree with the leniency we have extended to the former president, uh, according uh, to him, uh, being a former president and being a former uh, head of state, Mr. Chair. Unfortunately, some of the guests here who were present, who were not present, sent us a letter, an excuse letter, specifying medical reasons. And for some, they have also sent their lawyers to represent them. I believe the lawyer of the former president, Attorney Delgra, is being given authority by his uh, client, this, uh, this being the former president, to appear on his behalf. Because I, as I was glancing over the letter of Attorney Delgra, specifying the reasons why the former president decided not to attend uh, this committee hearing. And some of them are, to me, uh, is some of the reasons, at least on my part, the way I understood it, is not only on the basis of him avoiding or refusing to attend the Quadcom, but he even went uh, to assail the integrity of the, of the Quad Committee and even questioning the impartiality of some of the members of this Quad Committee. Now, I believe some of the members in the Senate, our counterpart, have also been, also been extended uh, the same invitation. But due to interparliamentary courtesy, we understand we never forced for these uh, individuals to appear before this committee. I just want to be, be clarified. Um, as to the questions of attacking the credibility uh, of the uh, Quad Committee, and to some extent even questioning the impartiality of some of the members here, and in totality questioning the integrity of this Quad Committee, I would want, I, I really would want to ask Attorney Delgra to expound on this letter um, because the former president attended the Senate committee investigation and so generously shared his thoughts 
on his policy on the war, war against illegal drugs. And as, again, as I was glancing over the letter, I also noticed that there are even some allegations of subordination. I'm sorry, subordination. That some of the members here coerced a certain individual to say something um, which basically inducing perjury. So that is something to me that is cannot be just simply ignored because it, it borders criminal acts, Mr. Chair. And the third one, Mr. Chair, is that the, the reason why the former president is not present today, it's because according to his lawyer, he has sufficiently and generously um, shared his inputs and insights and comments to the Senate subcommittee chaired by Senator Coco Pimentel. But unfortunately, my, my confusion, Mr. Chair, is that when his, form, his allies, his spokesperson was asked about the truthfulness of his responses to the interpolation of one of the members of the Senate, he told the public that it was merely a joke, that the truthfulness of the statements of the former president seems to be in question, because how can we take something which is a joke? So it makes me, it, it, it's difficult for me, Mr. Chair, to just simply take, as it is at face value, the transcript from the Senate when we do not even know which part of his statements is a joke and which part of his statement is real and true. I, I, these questions I would really want to ask to his lawyer. Now again, we don't require the former president to be present because we accorded to him the leniency and the respect that he deserves as a former head of state, as a for the former president. But then again, these allegations of impartiality, uh, questioning, of, questioning the impartiality of the squad committee, assailing the integrity of the Quad Committee, I, at the very least, Mr. Chair, I, I really was really expecting that Attorney Delgra would be present and rather than just send to us a simple three pages letter. At the very least, he could at least enter his presence here, his attendance, Mr. Chair. So I just want to be clarified on how do we go about with this. Kasi una una, Mr. Chair, parang Look at all our invitees here, Mr. Chair. Some of the most important personalities that would give us insights and inputs for this committee to be guided properly and correctly in arriving to a sound judgment once we file before the plenary and report before the plenary, the committee hearing, are not here, are not present. Some of them, bigla na lang sumasakit ang mga bali. Mga bigla, bigla, bigla na lang may sumasakit sa mga katawan nila. Eh, some of them are, in, are still, if, meron mga, mga, ano, mga search warrant, yung iba. So I just want, I just do not want to uh, uh, impress upon the public that these individuals who have served the government, who at some point in time took the oath of allegiance to the Constitution, at alam po natin ito lahat, upholding the, the Constitution without mental reservation of, or acts of evasion. The very Constitution that is sworn to uphold and pledge the allegiance to gives us the mandate to constitutionally exercise what they're doing right now, Mr. Chair, is a clear act of evasion. Mr. Chair, I just want to be clarified. How do we go about with this kind of situation? Is that the... Uh, uh, yes, Congressman Paduano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ganito lang po, Mr. Chairman. Why I moved to issue a cause, but I don't have any debate with regards to the uh, possible uh, amendments to my motion uh, with regards to uh, uh, Shokos order for Attorney Delgra. But remember, remember, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we have already sent two invitations. This is the second hearing that we invited the former president. And the first invitation was answered by Attorney Delga, no, for on behalf of the president, in the absence of uh, that authority being requested by this committee 
through this representation during the last hearing. Now, Mr. Chairman, looking at the answer, looking at the reply of Attorney Der Derga on the first hearing, well, in fact, Mr. Chairman, naglulokwan tayo dito. Why? Why? Because the first reply made by Attorney Delgra representing the former president is that the excuse is that the president, the former president, needs much rest. And assured this committee, assured this committee that he will be present in the next hearing. At the same time, he has a specific date, Mr. Chairman, given to this committee through this letter after November 1. And let me read, Mr. Chairman, allow me to read in total the portion of such reply coming from uh, Attorney Delga. Hence, my client respectfully requests to defer his appearance before the Honorable Committee scheduled tomorrow. Rest assured of my client's willingness to appear before the House of Representatives on some other available date, preferably after November 1, 2024. And for the record, Mr. Chairman, the invitation that was sent to the former president and was answered by Tony Derga was before the presence of the former president in the Senate. And he has promised us this committee through his letter that after November 1, he will be present in today's hearing. Ano to? Naglulukuan tayo dito? Well, in fact, I will not discuss and argue with our colleague, uh, Congressman Kit Flores, with regards to the content of this second letter. But, malinaw po, Mr. Chairman, na naglulukuan tayo dito. Naglulukuan tayo dito because the first letter promised us that he will be present after November 1. Kung hindi tayo naglulukuan dito, eh ano, natatakot siya na pumunta dito? I say, Mr. Chairman, that's why my first motion was to issue a SOCOS order for attorney Delga to answer both letters. And, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to reiterate once again that we should invite again the former president to be present in the next hearing. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank we, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congressman Patuano. Mr. Uh, Mr. As I promised. That's yeah. correct. Just to put context, Mr. Chair, of, my, of the manifestation of this uh, uh, humble representation. Mr. Chair, the reason why I wanted uh, Attorney Delga to be present, in fact, today, uh, and not, not pass to the next meeting, is uh, I agree with Congressman Keith Flores that he is not competent to answer questions pertaining to the implementation of illegal war on drugs. But just to be honest, Mr. Chair, I don't think the former president will ever attend the Quad Committee hearing. Okay. I'm sorry to say that. Okay. I, I really have a strong feeling that he will never attend the Quad Committee. Okay. And since Attorney Delgra is his uh, lawyer, I would wanted to ask him about the content of his letter. I'm sure he's a capable lawyer and competent enough to elucidate to this representation. Being a non-lawyer, what does he mean by subordination? I'm, I'm, because yes, that's one of the allegations. Number two, Mr. Chair, I also wanted to ask Attorney Delgra, which part of the testimony of, uh, of his client in the, to the Senate, uh, in the Senate during the committee hearing, which portion of it is joke and which portion of it is true? Because he's trying to provide us, he's, uh, from advising us to just simply request the transcript from the Senate. Mr. Chair, I have no problem if uh, individuals want to, you know, want to, you know, want to, you know, make other people's laugh all the time. I have no trouble with that. If you want to turn yourselves as clowns, that's your business, that's your concern. But not at the expense of serious issues. Not at the expense of the collateral damages, the innocents who have died, during the course of the illegal war on drugs. Okay, if, thank you, th Congressman. That's my only point, Mr. Chair, that I'd like to manifest. Yeah, thank you your very much. observation is uh, noted. And uh, 
we will uh, consider discussion on that particular observation when we come to that uh, at the proper time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your uh, manifestation. Now, um,